हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू माय चैनल द लर्न फिजिक्स टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग ए वन शॉर्ट वीडियो ऑफ रे ऑप्टिक्स एंड ऑप्टिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट द टू डेज डिस्कशंस आर स्फेरिकल मिरर्स द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ इमेज इन कॉन्केव एंड कॉन्वेक्स मिरर एंड वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूमेरिकल रिलेटेड टू इट देन रिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट एपरेंट डेप्थ रियल डेप्थ लैटरल डिसप्लेसमेंट एंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एनशियाटी न्यूमेरिकल रिलेटेड टू दिस नेक्स्ट द टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन and various phenomena due to total internal reflection such as a field of view of an aquatic animal deviation of rays produced by total reflecting prism then we proceed the refraction on curved surface lens maker's formula and different types of numericals are on lens and finally optical instrument that is simple microscope compound microscope astronomical telescope and a reflecting telescope and i will be solving all types of ncert numerical related to this now first of all sign convention and f equals to r by 2 now look at this this is a concave mirror and this is a convex mirror the center of the mirror is called pole the the center of the sphere of which the mirror is a part is called center of curvature and line joining pole and center of curvature is called principal axis if a parallel ray is incident on a concave mirror the ray after reflection passes through a point on the principal axis called focus in the same way in the case of convex mirror now in same way in case of convex mirror the ray appear to diverge from a point called focus now we have to prove f equal to r by 2 that is focal length of a mirror is half of its radius of curvature okay a perpendicular at the point of incidence is drawn this perpendicular passes through a point c in the same way a perpendicular is drawn which passes through the point c okay now look at this this is the angle of incidence this is the angle of reflection and this look at this this and this parallel so if this theta this also theta if this theta and this theta so this is the 2 theta okay no problem in the same way look at this angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection and this is the vertically opposite angle and this angle and this angle are corresponding angle look at this, this is theta this is theta so this is the 2 theta okay suppose this is the m this is the f okay now look at this angle m f p is equal to 2 theta equal to twice of angle m c p okay no problem okay now look at this <laughs> look at this angle mp is equal to mp by of and mcp this is the 2 into mp by pc look at this this is the focal length this and this cancel out so 1 by f equal to 2 by r therefore f equal to r by 2 understood now sign convention look at this ray look at this this is the y axis this is the x axis this is a positive x axis this is the negative x axis this is the positive y axis this is the positive so this is the this is the negative y axis now all the distance in front of the mirror is negative and all the distances behind the mirror is positive the height above the principal axis is positive height below the principal axis is negative so object distance so real object distance is negative virtual object distance positive real image distance negative virtual image distance positive focal length of concave mirror negative focal length of convex mirror is positive 
the virtual image becomes erect so magnification of virtual image is positive and magnification of real image is negative okay now formation of image look at this this is a concave mirror this is the pole look at this this is the principal axis this is the c look at this an object ab is placed on the principal axis of the mirror of small aperture perpendicular to its principal axis look at this a ray parallel to the principal axis incident on the mirror so after reflection it passes through the focus okay so if this is the focus after reflection it passes through the focus okay so this is the focus now another ray incident at the pole so after reflection it passes through this point okay the two reflected ray meet at this point so this is the image a dash b dash okay understood no problem now from sign convention look at this the object distance now look at this the object distance pb this equal to minus u image distance pb dash this is the minus b and focal length pf equal to minus f okay look at this the triangle p a dash b dash similar to triangle p a b okay now look at this here a b a dash b dash divided by a b this equal to p b dash divided by p b okay so look at this this is the minus b minus u so this is the v by u this is equation number 1 is the triangle f a dash b dash similar to triangle f m p okay this is the m p so look at this from here a dash b dash divided by m p this equal to look at this a dash b dash by m p so this is the b dash f by this is the p f now b dash f means o p b dash look at this this is the p b dash minus p f divided by p f now from this condition this is the minus b this is the minus f and this is the minus f so look at this v minus f divided by f this is equation number 2 now from 1 and 2 look at this now from 1 and 2 we get v by u equal to v minus f divided by f so look at this this is the vf equal to uv minus uf so look at this uf plus vf equal to uv therefore now dividing this equation by u v and f so we get look at this this is the 1 by v plus 1 by u equal to 1 by f okay now linear magnification look at this from this figure if height of the object be hi and height of the image ho so look at this a dash b dash this is the minus hi ab is the ho so this is the minus so this is the minus b by minus u so hi by ho this equal to minus v by u this is the magnification okay understood now next question will the spherical mirror relation be applicable for plane mirror now look at this for plane mirror the focal length of plane mirror is infinity so 1 by infinity equal to 0 so look at this 1 by v plus 1 by u equal to 0 therefore v equal to minus u understood now newton's equation look at this we we get the formula 1 by v plus 1 by u equal to 1 by f now look at this this is the lcm uv this is the u plus v equal to 1 by f okay no problem now multiply this is the uv equal to uf plus vf 
Now from this condition we can write this is the UV minus UF minus VF this equal to zero. Okay. Now adding F square on both side. So look at this UV minus UF minus VF plus F square this equal to F square. Now this becomes U into V minus F minus F into V minus F equal to f square so look at this u minus f into v minus f this equal to f square now u minus f means object distance from the focus v minus f image distance from the focus if x and y be the object and image distance from the focus then this can be written as x y equal to f square understood now if a graph is plotted between x and y, then this graph becomes rectangular hyperbola. If a graph is plotted between u and v, so this graph is also parabola. And if a graph is plotted between 1 by u and 1 by v, then this graph becomes straight line. Okay? Now look at this. In case of concave mirror, each object lies between f and twice f. What will be the nature of the image? Suppose u be minus 2f by 3. So look at this. This is the 1 by v plus this is the minus 3f by 2 equal to for concave mirror. Look at this. f is negative. Look at this. The focus of the concave mirror lies in front of the mirror. We know all the distance in front of the mirror is negative. So look at this. So 1 by v, this equals to minus 1 by f plus 2 by this is the 3f. Now this is the LCM 3f and look at this minus 3 plus 2. So this is the 1 by 3f that is negative sign. So v equal to minus 3f. Therefore look at this m equal to minus v by u. Look at this here minus v equal to minus 3f u equal to minus 3f by 2. So this is the minus 2. Okay. So magnified real image is formed if the object plays between this and this. Okay. Next. A convex mirror produces virtual image for a real object. For convex mirror, the focal length is positive. So look at this. This is the 1 by V. For a real object, U negative and this is the 1 by positive. So look at this 1 by V equal to 1 by U plus 1 by F. Look at this from this condition, V is positive. If V is positive, then the image is virtual. Now magnification. Look at this 1 by V equal to UF divided by F plus U. So V by U equal to F divided by U plus F. Look at this. This is the less than 1. So image is diminished. So a, a convex mirror always produces virtual and diminished image for a real object. Look at this. If object moves away from the mirror, what happens on V? Look at this. From this condition, if U increases, 1 by u decreases uh, as 1 by f constant so 1 by v also decreases as 1 by d v decreases so v increases therefore size of the image becomes larger if the object moves away from the mirror okay next in case of a concave mirror each object lie between pole and focus the image becomes magnified and virtual now look at this 1 by v plus for real object this is the minus u and for con and for concave mirror the focal length is negative so look at this this is the 1 by v equal to 1 by u minus 1 by f now take lcm uf this is the f minus u so v by u from here this is the f divided by f minus u look at this f minus u is less than f so f minus u greater than 1 okay now from this condition u u less than f so 1 by u greater than 1 by f so this is the positive v positive 
means the image is virtual and look at this the magnification greater than one therefore a concave mirror produces virtual and magnified image if object lies between pole and focus understood now next now look at this ncert numerical 9.1 The height of an object is 2.5 cm is placed at a distance of minus 20 cm in front of a concave mirror of focal length 18 cm we have to calculate the position of the image nature and size of it if object moves towards the mirror in what direction the screen should be displaced okay now look at this here look at this here u given f given now v can be calculated so look at this this is the 1 by v plus 1 by u this is the 1 by f okay no problem now look at this this is the 1 by v plus this is the minus 27 equal to this is the minus 18 Look at this. This is the one by v minus one by eighteen plus one by twenty seven. Now, what is the LCM of eighteen and twenty seven? Fifty four. Therefore, look at this. This is the fifty four. So this is the minus three plus two. So v equal to minus fifty four. So position of the screen is fifty four centimeter from the mirror. Okay. Now look at this. The H I by H O this equal to minus V by U. So look at this here H I now H O equals to this is the two point five and the minus V V equal to now V V equal to minus fifty four and U equals to minus twenty seven. So this is the minus two. So H I equal to five centimeter. Okay. Now if the object is moved towards the mirror. the image moves away from the mirror so the so the screen should be displaced away from the mirror okay understood now next now the ncert numerical 9.2 look at this an object of height 4.5 cm is placed 12 cm in front of a convex mirror of focal length 12 cm now we have to calculate the position of image and magnification of the image produced by it what will be the change of v if u increases now look at this here u equal to minus 12 f equals to plus 15 this is the 1 by v plus this is the 1 by u so this is the 1 by f now this is the 1 by v plus this is the minus 12 and this is the 1 by 15 So look at this. This is the one by v equal to one by twelve plus one by fifteen. Now what is the LCM of fifteen and twenty? Now the LCM of fifteen and twenty is sixty. So look at this. This this is the five plus four. Okay. So look at this. V equal to sixty by nine. That is six point six seven. Okay. V plus. So image will be virtual. And placed 6.6 centimeter behind the mirror. Now magnification m is equal to h i by h o. So this is the minus v by u. Look at this. Here v equal to 60 by 9, and u equal to look at this. This is the minus 12, and this is the negative side. So look at this. This is the 5 by 9. Okay. Now look at this. The height of the image. Here h i by 4.5, and this is the 5 by 9. So here h i equal to this is the 5 by 2. So 2.5 centimeter. Okay. Now what happens if u increases? Look at this from this figure. Now as u is negative, so we can write 1 by v minus u equal to 1 by f so look at this 1 by v equal to 1 by u plus 1 by f look at this u increases now as u increases so 1 by u decreases as 1 by f is constant so 1 by v also decreases 
as 1 by v decreases, so therefore v increases. Therefore, if the object moves away from the mirror, the image also moves away from the mirror. Okay, understood? Next. Now, look at this. This is the plane of separation between two medium having Ri, this is the mu1 and this is the mu2. Here, Ri mu1 less than mu2. That is, this is the rarer medium and this is the denser medium. Now, suppose this is a normal. Suppose a ray, suppose a ray, this is the AB incident on the surface of separation between two medium of Ri mu1 and mu2. Now, as the ray moves from rarer medium to denser medium, so the ray bends towards the normal. So this is the incident ray and this is the refracted ray. If I be the angle of incidence and R be the angle of refraction, here R less than I. When light travels from denser medium to rarer medium, the angle of refraction greater than angle of incidence. Now, laws of refraction. Incident ray, refracted ray, and normal at the point of incidence lie on the same plane. Second law. For a given color of light and given pair of media, the, the ratio between sign of angle of incidence and sign of angle of refraction is constant. This ratio is called the Ri of this medium with respect to this. That is Ri of second medium with respect to first. So look at this, 1 mu 2, this is the sin i by sin r. This is known as Snell's law. Look at this, <laughs> here Ri of Ri of 2 with respect to 1, this equals to Ri of 2 by Ri of 1. So 1 mu 2 equal to mu 2 by mu 1. Now mu 2 by mu 1, this equal to sin i divided by sin r. Okay, therefore mu 1 sin i equal to mu 2 sin r. This is known as generalized Snell's law. Look at this, mu 1 into sin of this angle equal to mu 2 into sin of this angle. Okay, now absolute refractive index. The absolute refractive index of a medium is the ratio between velocity of light in vacuum and velocity of light in that medium. So look at this, this is the V. We know V always less than C. So the absolute, re so absolute refractive index of a medium always greater than 1. Okay, now we have to express mu and wavelength of light. In refraction, the frequency of light remain unchanged, but velocity of light and wavelength of light changes. Suppose wavelength of light in the the the, the wavelength of light in free space is lambda, so c equals to nu into lambda. And in that medium, this is the lambda dash. So V equal to nu lambda dash. Therefore, mu equal to nu lambda divided by nu lambda dash. Therefore, mu equal to lambda by lambda dash is the relation between mu and lambda. Now, we know the lambda r greater than lambda V. Okay, here mu r less than mu v. So the deviation of red color in a medium is less than the, than the deviation of violet color. That is why the red light is used as signaling light. During sunrise and sunset, the sky becomes red because of during sunrise and sunset, the rays of light travel maximum distance in air medium. 
so deviation of red color in the air medium is least and deviates of other color is more so other color cannot reach our eye only red color reach our eye that is why during sunset and sunrise the sky appears red understood now next now we have to express the relation between real depth and apparent depth now look at this this is a transparent medium of width d a luminous object is placed at the bottom of a transparent medium of ri mu look at this a normal ray incident on the interface and a oblique ray incident in the interface after refraction they appear to meet at this point okay so this is the this is the image of object p now if this is the angle of incidence r and this is the and angle of refraction i then applying generalized snell's law we know look at this this is the mu into sin r this equal to 1 into sin i okay now suppose this is the a and this is the b look at this if a and b are very close to each other so look at this mu equal to sin i by sin r so mu equal to sin i by sin r if a and b are very close to each other the angle i and angle r are very small so we can write this is the tan i divided by this is the tan r so look at this this is the i so this is also i this is the r this is the also r okay look at this tan i a b by a p dash so look at this this is the a b by a p dash and look at this tan r this is the a b by a p okay now this is the a p by a p dash so look at this mu equal to real depth by apparent depth now shift look at this shift p p dash p p dash this is the a p minus a p dash so look at this a p dash equal to a p by mu so this is the a p minus a p by mu so a p into 1 minus 1 by mu and this is the d so this is the d into 1 minus 1 by mu okay understood now look at this three conjugative medium d1 d2 d3 are in contact and they are arise mu1 mu2 and mu3 respectively then apparent depth d equal to this is the d1 by mu1 plus this is the d2 by mu2 plus this is the d3 by mu3 okay now look at this if the observer is at the denser medium and object is at the rarer medium then look at this look at this this is an object p a ray falls now a ray from p enters normally into the denser medium another ray incident look at this another ray incident obliquely so after refraction it bends towards the normal so look at this this ray appear to come from this point so look at this p rises above p dash so look at this this is the real height this is the apparent height so in this case mu becomes this is the if suppose this is the a so this is the a p dash by a p okay so look at this if the observer is the rarer medium then mu equal to real depth by apparent depth if the observer is the denser medium then mu equal to apparent height by real height understood next look at this a tank is filled 
up to the height of 12.5 cm. The bottom of the tank viewed at a depth of 9.4 cm. What will be the Ri? Now look at this. So here mu equal to AP divided by AP dash. So look at this. This is the 12.5 divided by 9.4. So this is 1.33. Okay, now if this water is replaced by another medium, what will be the apparent depth? So look at this, this is the 1.63 equal to AP divided by AP double dash. So look at this, AP double dash, this is the AP. AP look at this, AP equal to 12.5 divided by 1.63, okay? is equal to 7.7 centimeter okay so the microscope has to be raised look at 9.4 minus 7.7 .7. so this is the 1.7 centimeter is the shift of microscope to focus the object okay look at this an object this object is viewed from the height a glass slab up with 15 centimeter and mu 1.5 centimeter is placed between this. What will be the shift of the object? Now we know that the shift of the object d into 1 minus 1 by mu. Okay, so look at this. This is the 15, 1 minus 1.5. So look at this. This is the 15 minus 15 by 1.5 so this is the 15 minus 10 so this is the 5 centimeter now the another question will the amount of shift depends on position of the slab no the shift does not depends on position of this slab okay next look at this this is a slab the the width of the slab is d and ri is mu we have to calculate the lateral displacement of a ray when it passes through this. Now look at this, if this is the incident ray. When this incident ray passes through this, the actual direction of ray is this direction. The, the, the actual direction of ray in this direction. Now due to refraction, the ray bends towards the normal and at this point, this bends away from the normal and this bends away from the normal. Now look at this, the direction of original ray and emergent ray are parallel. The distance between these two rays is known as a lateral displacement. If this is the P, this is the Q, this is the R, this is the S and RT normal on this, the, the, the normal RT on PQ measures the lateral displacement. The lateral displacement depends on angle of incidence, width of the slab and RI of the media. Okay, now next. Now look at this total internal reflection. First of all, critical angle. When a ray of light travels from a denser medium to rarer medium, the ray bends away from the normal. If the angle of incidence increases such that the ray passes through the interface of the two medium, then this angle of incidence is called critical angle. Therefore, the critical angle is the angle of incident at the denser medium. Therefore, critical angle is the angle of incidence in the denser medium by which angle of refraction becomes 90 degree in the rarer medium. If mu1 and, if mu1 and mu2 be the array of rarer medium and array of denser medium, then applying generalized sense law, we get this is the mu1 sin 90 degree, this equal to mu2 into sin c, sin c. Therefore, sin c is equal to mu1 by mu2. 
सो साइन ऑफ क्रिटिकल एंगल इज इक्वल टू आर आई ऑफ रेयर मीडियम डिवाइड बाय आर आई ऑफ डेंसर मीडियम इफ म्यू वन इक्वल टू वन देन म्यू टू इक्वल टू यू देयर फोर साइन सी इज इक्वल टू वन बाय म्यू देयर फोर सी इक्वल टू साइन इन वर्स वन बाय म्यू ओके अंडरस्टूड नाउ नेक्स्ट द क्रिटिकल एंगल ऑफ ग्लासियर मीडियम दिस इक्वल टू साइन इन वर्स वन बाय वन पॉइंट फाइव सो दिस इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी टू डिग्री इन द सेम वे द क्रिटिकल एंगल ऑफ वाटर एयर मीडियम इज इक्वल टू साइन इन वर्स दिस इज द वन बाय फोर बाय थ्री सो दिस इज द साइन इन वर्स थ्री बाय फोर देयर फोर दिस इज द फोर्टी एट पॉइंट फाइव डिग्री ओके द क्रिटिकल एंगल ऑफ ग्लास वाटर मीडियम इज साइन इन वर्स आर आई ऑफ वाटर दैट इज द फोर बाय थ्री डीआर डिवाइड बाय आर आई ऑफ ग्लास सो दिस इज द सिक्सटी थ्री डिग्री इन द सेम वे द क्रिटिकल एंगल ऑफ डायमंड एयर मीडियम दिस इज द साइन इन वर्स वन बाय टू पॉइंट फोर टू सो दिस इक्स टू ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेंटी फोर डिग्री ओके अंडरस्टूड नाउ टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन सपोज दिस इज द डेंसर मीडियम एंड दिस इज द रेयर मीडियम इफ ए रे ऑफ लाइट ट्रेवल्स फ्रॉम डेंसर मीडियम टू रेयर मीडियम इंसिडेंट एट एन एंगल ऑफ इंसिडेंट्स आई ग्रेटर देन क्रिटिकल एंगल अप टू मीडिया देन द लाइट इज टोटली रिफ्लेक्टेड बाय द इंटरफेस ऑफ द टू मीडिया एंड अगेन एंटर इन टू द डेंसर मीडियम दिस फेनोमेन इज नॉन एज टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन द कंडीशन ऑफ टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन सर द रे मस्ट पास फ्रॉम डेंसर मीडियम टू रेयर मीडियम एंड एंगल ऑफ इंसिडेंट्स इन द डेंसर मीडियम ग्रेटर देन द क्रिटिकल एंगल ऑफ टू मीडियम ओके द फेनोमेन ड्यू टू टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन इज ब्राइटनेस ऑफ डायमंड द आर आई ऑफ डायमंड इज टू पॉइंट फोर टू सो क्रिटिकल एंगल ऑफ डायमंड एयर मीडियम इज ट्वेंटी फोर डिग्री देयर फोर हॉइंड रे ऑफ लाइट इंसिडेंट फ्रॉम डायमंड टू एयर द रे इजिली टोटली रिफ्लेक्टेड इन डायमंड एयर मीडियम नाउ द डायमंड इज कट इन सच वे दैट लाइट कैन कम आउट ओनली फ्रॉम फ्यू सर्विसेस सो ए कॉन्डेंस बीम ऑफ लाइट कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम द डायमंड दैट इज वाई द डायमंड इज सो ब्राइट The next phenomenon due to total internal reflection is mirrors. There are two types of mirrors. One happens in desert, and other happens in cold countries. Now, total reflecting prism, isosceles and right angle prisms are called total reflecting prism. Now, look at this. If a ray of light Incident normally in the surface A B, then the angle of incidence at the second surface. Look at this. This is the forty-five. This is ninety. So this is also forty-five. We know the C of glassier medium is forty-two degree. So the ray totally reflected at this surface and moving along this direction. So here deviation is. Look at this. This is the ninety degree. okay the total reflecting prism is immersed in water the critical angle of glass water medium is 63 degree as the angle of incidence 45 degree less than the critical angle so refraction occur and ray moves towards the water medium now in this case the ray of light incident this way so here angle of incidence at this surface is 45 degree so total internal reflection takes place so so total internal reflection takes place and ray back to this direction so look at this 
look at here deviation is 90 degree here deviation is 90 degree therefore incident and emergent beam are parallel this phenomenon is used to to erect an inverted image with a deviation of 180 degree now look at this if a ray enter this way now here this is the now this now if a ray enter this so here angle of incidence is 45 degree now this is the and at this point the total internal reflection takes place as total internal reflection takes place so ray moves along this direction look at this this ray and this ray are parallel and deviation is zero degree so this principle is used to erect an inverted image with deviation is zero degree okay now field of view of an aquatic animal look at this during sunrise and sunset the angle of incidence is 90 degree so angle of refraction in water medium this is the critical angle so this is the 48.5 degree okay in the same way here this is the 48 degree okay this is the C, so this is the 48.5 degree. Therefore, the, the maximum angle through which the light coming into the eye of an aquatic animal is, look at this, this is the 48.5 plus 48.5. So total angle is, this is the 97 degree. Therefore, an aquatic animal see the light coming from this direction. The light coming from this direction. So an aquatic animal sees the whole inverse through, a, through an inverted cone having a semi-vertical angle is C. This is equal to 48.5 degree. If H be the height of the aquatic animal and R be the radius of it, then look at this, this tan C is equal to, this is the R by H. So radius R equal to, this is the H by tan C. This is the H, so this is the sin C divided by cos C. Now H sin C, this is the 1 by mu and look at this, this is the 1 minus 1 by mu square. So this is the H divided by mu square minus 1. Okay, understood? So an aquatic animal see the whole inverse through an inverted cone having semi-vertical angle C equal to 48.5 degree and radius of base of the cone is equal to h divided by root under mu square minus 1. So area of cross section through which light enter this is the pi r square. So this is the a equal to pi into h square divided by mu square minus 1. Okay understood now next. A light bulb is placed at the bottom of a tank of depth 80 centimeter. We have to calculate the area through which the light coming from it. Now we know the radius through the the radius of cross section through which the light coming from the bulb is r equal to h divided by root under of this is the mu square minus 1. So look at this. So area a equal to pi r square. So look at this pi into h square divided by this is the mu square minus 1. Now in case of water mu is equal to 4 by 3. Now put the value. So this is the 3.14. Now 80 centimeter means 0 0.8 meter so this is the 0 0.8 square and this is the mu square so this is the 4 by 3 whole square minus 1 this is the 3.14 and this is the 0 0.64 and this is the 9 divided by 7 and this is equal to 2.6 meter square understood next now total internal reflection in optical fiber optical fiber is very thin transparent refracting medium 
through which a light gets totally reflected. Now look at this, this is an optical fiber. The layer of the optical fiber is known as cladding. The array of cladding mu1 less than the array of optical fiber mu2. So sine of critical angle between these two medium is equal to mu1 by mu2. Now if a ray of light enter into if a ray of light is enter into the optical fiber, the maximum angle of incidence i, the angle of refract the, the angle of refraction here, this is the r. Now here angle of now here angle of incidence is just greater than critical angle of these two media, then light gets totally reflected here. And again, the ray of light totally reflected from this point. And now ray of light travels from one end of optical fiber, one end of optical fiber to other end without losing any energy. So look at this. In this case, the angle of incidence just greater than critical angle. So look at this, this plus this and this is the 90 degree. So now this plus this plus this equal to 180 degree. So look at this C plus R equal to 90 degree. So R equals to 90 degree minus C. Now, apply, now applying generalized Snell's law at this point, we know we get one into sin I, this equal to mu two into sin R. Now, So this is the mu2 into sine of this is the 90 degree minus c. So this is the mu2 into cos c. So look at this. This is the sine i. This equal to mu2 and this is the root under 1 minus this is the sine square c. Now sine c equal to mu1 by mu2. So look at this. This is the mu2 and this is the 1 minus mu1 square by mu2 square. So this is the mu2 square minus mu1 square. Okay. Now sin i is called numerical aperture of the optical fiber and i is the maximum angle of acceptance. Okay, now we have to solve a numerical relating to optical fiber. Now, NCRT 9.17. The array of optical fiber is 1.68 and array of covering or cladding is 1.44. We have to calculate the maximum angle of incidence in the optical fiber by which total internal reflection takes place. Okay, we know the sign of angle of incidence or angle of acceptance. This is the mu2 square minus mu1 square. So look at this. This is the 1.68 whole square minus 1.44 whole square. Okay, so this is the 3.12 into this is the 0 0.24. This is the almost 0.866 so this is the 1.732 divided by 2 so this is the sine 60 degree okay therefore angle of incidence is 60 degree if there is no covering so here mu1 equal to 1 so in this case the sin i equal to look at this sin i equal to root under of d square minus d square so this is the 1.68 whole square minus 1 square this is the 2.68 and this is the 0 0.68 okay now from this figure we get i equal to this is the 53.5 degree okay so in this case the angle of acceptance becomes 53.5 degree okay understood now next now refraction in curved surface so look at this an object is placed at o in front of the pole of the spherical surface now O be an object placed in front of the pole of the spherical surface. 
Now a ray incident normally on this surface. Now another ray incident obliquely, this is the OA on the surface. After refraction, they meet at the point I. So I is the image of O. Now, if C be the center of curvature, so any so, so C A be the normal to the surface. So look, look at this. This is the angle of incidence I and this is the angle of refraction R. This is the alpha, this is the beta and this is the theta. So look at this. OP is the object distance. So from here, OP equal to minus U. Now, IP is the image distance. So IP is equal to plus V. And CP is the radius of curvature. So this is the plus R. All the distances in front of the surface is negative and behind the surface is positive. Okay. Now from triangle OAC, here this is the look here now 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 from triangle OAC this is the exterior angle so I equal to alpha plus theta okay now from triangle IAC look at this IAC theta is the exterior angle so theta equal to R plus beta therefore R equal to theta minus beta now applying generalized Schnell's law we get this is the mu1 sin i equal to mu2 sin r look at this a and p are very close to each other so i and r very very small so look at this here mu1 i equals to mu2 r now put the value of i and r in this equation so we get mu1 i i means alpha plus theta and mu2 r means theta minus beta okay now from this condition we can write alpha into mu1 plus beta into mu2 equal to theta into mu2 minus mu1 okay understood now look at this here alpha equal to look at this here look at this as a and p are very close point so a and p are taken as almost straight line so in this case alpha equal to this is the ap by op into mu1 plus beta look at this beta equal to this is the ap by pi and this is theta equal look at look at theta equal to this is the ap by pc into mu2 minus mu1 this is the mu2 okay now look at this here mu2 by pi plus mu1 by op equal to mu2 minus mu1 divided by pc now look at this op equal to minus u pi equal to plus b and cp equal to r so from this equation we so finally get look at this this is the mu2 by v minus mu1 by u and this is the mu2 minus mu1 divided by r this is the relation between this relation between object and image formed by the spherical curved surface of radius of curvature capital r okay now next now a parallel ray incident on a glass sphere of radius 20 centimeter we have to find the image distance due to refraction at the first surface and final image distance as the ray coming from infinity so look at this u1 equal to minus infinity v1 is equal to question mark and r1 is equal to plus 20 centimeter okay now applying the formula look at this this is the 1.5 and this is the 1 so look at this here mu1 equal to 1 and mu2 equal to 1.5 okay so now applying the formula mu2 by v minus mu1 by u this is the mu2 minus mu1 divided by r so from here look at this this is the 1.5 
by v minus 1 by infinity this is the 1.5 minus 1 this is the 20 okay so from this relation we can get 1.5 by v this is the 0.5 by 20 so this is the 1 by 40 so look at this v equal to 60 so image distance due to refraction at the first surface is 60 centimeter from it okay understood now final image distance now the ray again refracted at this surface and final image is formed at this point okay so now we have to calculate this the image i look at this the this image formed due to first surface act as the object for second surface so now for second surface look at this for second surface u1 is equal to look at this this to this is 60 centimeter now this is the 40 centimeter so object distance from the second surface is plus 20 centimeter okay and r radius of curvature for this surface is minus 20 now look at this this is the now this is the as the ray move from denser medium to rarer medium so look at this this is the mu1 by v1 minus mu2 mu2 by 20 and this is the mu1 minus mu2 divided by minus 20 okay now look at this so this is the 1 by v1 minus 1.5 divided by 20 and look at this this is the 1 minus 1.5 this is the minus 20 so 1 by v1 minus 1.5 by 20 so this is the 1 by 40 look at this this is the 1 by v1 equals to 3 by 40 plus 1 by 40 so this is the 1 by 10 okay therefore v1 is equal to 10 so image form from the second surface is 10 centimeter so image distance from the center look at this this is the 20 and this is the 10 so this is the 30 centimeter from the center of the sphere okay understood now next now lens formula and lens makers formula look at this this is a lens this is the principal axis of a lens an object o is now a ray incident normally on the lens and another ray incident obliquely at the first surface of the lens after refraction it forms an image at R, at this point i1 now again at the refraction at the second surface the final image is i so look at this for i i1 is the virtual object now this is the mu2 this is the mu1 this is the mu1 object distance is u and image distance for first surface this is the v1 now applying the relation of image and object of spherical surface we get this is the mu2 by v1 minus mu1 by u this is the mu2 minus mu1 mu2 minus mu1 mu2 minus mu1 divided by r1 where r1 is the radius of curvature of the first surface now the image i1 act as the object for the second surface if v be the final image distance so look at this this is the mu1 by v minus mu2 by v1 and this is the mu1 minus mu2 by r2 this is equation 2 now adding 1 and 2 we get look at this this and this cancel out so mu1 into 1 by v minus 1 by u this is the mu2 minus mu1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 okay so look at this 1 by v minus 1 by u this is the mu2 by mu1 minus 1 this is the 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 number 3 if 
if u equal to infinity then image v equal to focal length if we apply this relation we can get 1 by f minus 1 by infinity equal to mu 2 by mu 1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 so look therefore 1 by f equal to mu 2 by mu 1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this is equation 4 this is known as lens makers formula now from equation 3 and equation 2 we get 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to 1 by f this is the lens formula okay understood for convex lens r1 positive and r2 is no negative the lens maker formula 1 by f this is the mu 2 by mu 1 minus 1 is equal to 1 by r1 minus minus 1 by r2 so this is the 1 by r2 okay so look at this the focal length of convex lens is positive now this is the relation of focal length of convex mirror look at this the focal length becomes positive if mu 2 greater than mu 1 so if convex lens behaves like a converging lens if mu 2 greater than mu 1 that is ri of the material of the lens greater than the ri of the medium look at this if mu 2 greater than mu 1 then focal length positive then a convex lens behaves as a converging lens okay now if mu 2 less than mu 1 that is ri of the material of the lens less than the ri of the medium then the focal length of convex lens is negative in this case a convex lens behaves as a diverging lens okay this is the mu 2 mu 1 mu 1 and mu 2 less than mu 1 and in this case mu 2 greater than mu 1 and look at this a convex lens behaves as a plain glass plate a mu 2 equal to mu 1 so look at this this convex lens behaves as a plain glass plate in mu 2 equal to mu 1 okay understood now next the radius of curvature of equiconvex lens is r1 equal to r2 equal to 10 centimeter and it is a glass lens we have to calculate the focal length of the lens in air medium in a medium of ri 1.6 and in a medium of ri 4 by 3 that is in water now first case look at this 1 by f this is the mu 2 by mu 1 minus 1 and this is the 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 now look at this here r1 equal to r2 equal to 10 centimeter mu 2 equal to 1.5 and mu 1 equal to 1 so look at this 1 by f this is the 1.5 minus 1 and this equal to 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 okay so look at this 0 0.5 into 2 by 10 so this is the 1 by 10 therefore f equal to 10 centimeter is the focal length of the convex lens in air media now look at this in this medium so from this relation we can write 1 by f this is the 1.5 by 1.6 minus 1 and this equals to 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 okay now look at this this is the 1.5 minus 1.6 by 1.6 and this is the 1 by 5 okay this is the minus 0.1 by 1.6 into 1 by 5 so this is the minus 1 by 80 therefore f equals to minus 80 centimeter therefore focal length of the convex lens in this mirror sorry in this medium is negative so a convex so so in this medium the convex lens behaves as a diverging lens now in case of water 
look at this here 1 by f this is the 1.5 by 4 by 3 minus 1 and this is the 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 okay so look at this this is the 4.5 by 4 minus 1 and this is the 2 by 10 now look at now look at this this is the 0.5 into 2 divided by 4 into 10 so look at this this is the 1 by 40 so focal length of lens in the water medium is equal to 40 centimeter understood now next now look at this ncrt 9.7 a double equiconvex lens having RI 1.55 has focal length 20 cm. We have to calculate the radius of curvature. Now from lens maker's formula 1 by f equal to mu2 by mu1 minus 1 and this is the 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2. Now here mu1 equal to 1 for AR medium. So look at this, this is the 1 by f, so this is the 1.55 divided by 1 minus 1 into 1 by r plus 1 by r, okay? No problem. Therefore, 1 by f, therefore 1 by 20, this equals to 0 0.55 into 2 by r okay now look at this this is the 1.1 by r and this is the 1 by 20 so from this equation r equals to 22 so radius of curvature is equal to 22 centimeter okay now ncrt 9.8 Look at this, this is a convergent ray and point of convergence is P dash. A convex lens of focal length 20 cm is placed 12 cm before the point of convergence and a concave lens of focal length 16 cm placed same place as that of it. Now we have to calculate the point of convergence, okay? Now for convex lens, P is the virtual object, so U equal to plus 12 centimeter. F equal to, this is the plus 20 centimeter, we have to calculate V. Now 1 by V minus 1 by U, this is the 1 by F. So look at this, this is the 1 by V minus, this is the 12 and this is the 1 by 20. So look at this, 1 by V equal to 1 by 12 plus 1 by 20. 12 and 20, LCM is 60, so this is the 5 and this is the 3. So look at this, V equal to 60 by 8, so this is the 7.5. Therefore, point of convergence shifted from P dash to P, which is a, dis which is a distance 7.5 cm from the lens. Okay, now in the second case. Now look at this, in the second case f equal to, this is the concave length, so minus 16 cm. So look at this, 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to 1 by f, so 1 by v minus 1 by 12, this is the minus 1 by 16. Okay, now this is the minus 1 by 16. Now LCM of 12 and 16, this is the 48. So look at this, this is the 4 and this is the minus 3. So V equals to, this is the 48. So point of convergence shifted from 12 centimeter to 48 centimeter away from the lens. Okay, understood? Next, look at this. <coughs> An object of height 3 cm is placed 14 cm in front of a concave lens. Find the nature, position and size of the image. Now Look at this, here object distance minus 14 cm, focal length is minus 20 uh, focal length is minus 21 centimeter we have to calculate v so look at this 1 by v minus this is the 1 by u so this is the 1 by f now 1 by v this is the minus minus 14 and this is the 1 by minus 21 
therefore 1 by v equal to 1 by minus 14 minus 1 by 21 so look at this this is the 42 lcm and this is the minus 3 and this is the minus 2 so v equal to 42 by 5 okay so this is the 8.4 centimeter the image is for 8.4 centimeter in front of the lens so the image is virtual and erect now height of the image hi by height of the image ho this is the v by u now look at this this is the hi and ho equal to this is the 3 centimeter and this is the 8.4 and u equal to look at this this is the minus this is the minus 14 okay and this is also now look at this h i equal to this is the 3 into 0 0.6 so this is the 1.8 centimeter is the height of the object okay what happens if the object is moved away from the lens now look at this here u is negative so look at this 1 by v equal to 1 by f minus 1 by u now 1 by f constant if u increases then 1 by u decreases if 1 by u decreases 1 by f constant so 1 by v also decreases if 1 by v if 1 by v decreases then v increases so image also moves away from the lens okay now equivalent focal length when the two lenses are in contact this is the common principal axis of two lenses are in contact the focal length of first lens be f1 and focal length of second lens be f2 from the object o a ray passes through the optical center of the lenses and another ray another oblique ray incident on the lens after refraction at the first lens they meet at the point i1 so i1 is the image formed by the first lens if u be the object distance and v1 be the image distance for the lens then we can write 1 by v1 minus 1 by u equal to 1 by f1 this is equation number one now the image i1 formed by the first lens will be act as the object for the second lens the final image be at format i due to refraction at the second lens and this distance is v now for the second lens 1 by v minus 1 by v1 equal to 1 by f2 now 1 plus 2 we get 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 this is equation number 3 okay now a third lens of focal length capital f is placed in the position of the two lens in such a way that the position of object and final image remains in the same position so this is the u and this is the v then third lens is called equivalent of these two lens and its focal length is called equivalent focal length of the two of the two lenses now for the third lens 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to 1 by capital F this is equation number 4 now from 3 and 4 we can write 1 by f this equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 now power of the lens is reciprocal of its focal length so look at this the equivalent power p equal to this is the p1 plus p2 okay understood now look at this ncrt 9.10 look at this a convex lens of focal length 20 centimeter and a concave lens of focal length 30 centimeter are in contact we have to calculate the equivalent focal length capital f and nature of the combination now look at this 1 by f this is the 1 by f1 and this is the 1 by f2 so from here 1 by f this is the 1 by 20 minus 1 by 30 now lcm 60 this is the 3 minus 2 so f equal to 60 therefore equivalent focal length of the combination is 60 centimeter as the focal length is plus so it behaves as a convex lens okay now we have to calculate the equivalent focal length 
if two lenses are separated by a distance of 8 cm. If a parallel ray is incident on the lens, the point of convergence is the focal length. Now look at this, when the ray is incident on the convex lens, the image form at a distance 20 cm from the convex lens. Now this is 8 cm, so this is the 12 cm. Now this is the virtual object for convex lens. So for convex lens u equal to plus 12, f equal to minus 30, so 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to 1 by f. Now 1 by v minus 1 by 12 equal to minus 1 by 30. So 1 by v equal to 1 by 12 minus 1 by 30. Now LCM is 60. This is the 5 minus 2. So this is the 3 by 60. So this is the 1 by 20. So final image is formed at a distance 20 centimeter. So focal length if the rays of light incident from this side is 20 centimeter. Okay. So equivalent focal length is so equivalent focal length is 20 centimeter if the rays incident from this side. Okay. If a parallel ray incident on the concave lens, the ray appear to come from this point. Okay, this is the F dash. So this is the 30 centimeter, this is the 8 centimeter. So object distance for convex lens is 30 plus 8. So this is the 38 centimeter. And this is the negative. Okay, because the object is in because the object in front of the convex lens okay now its focal length is 20 centimeter its focal length is 20 centimeter so, so 1 by v minus minus 38 equal to 1 by 20 so look at this 1 by v equal to 1 by 20 minus 1 by 38 so look at this this is the 38 into 20 and this is the 38 minus 20. So V equal to 38 into 20 by 18. It is obviously greater than 38. Okay. When rays hit convex lens, the point of convergence is 20 centimeter from the concave lens. When the rays first hit on the concave lens, the point of convergence becomes 38 centimeter. So there is no unique point. So there is no need to find the equivalent formula. Now look at this. This is a convex lens and liquid and liquid of Ri mu entrapped here. Now when an object placed 45 centimeter in front of it, the the image formed at O. That is the lens combination and plane mirror combination forms the image at the position of the object. A lens mirror combination forms image at the position of the object if the object is placed at the first focus. So look at this, the focal length of this and this combination is 45 cm and focal length of convex lens is 30 cm. Now we have to calculate the focal length of this water lens. Understood? The focal length of this water lens is F2 and this lens is F1. Then look at this 1 by F that is 1 by 45 equal to 1 by F1 plus 1 by F2. Now look at this F2. Now this is the 1 by 30 and this is the 1 by 45 plus 1 by F2. So look at this 1 by F2, this equal to 1 by 45 minus 1 by 30. So look at this 90, this is the 2 minus 3, so F2 equal to 90 centimeter. Okay, if the focal length of equiconvex lens is 30 centimeter, then radius of curvature of each surface is also 30 centimeter. Now we have to calculate the mu of this liquid. So look at this 1 by F2, 
this equal to mu by 1 minus 1 and this is the 1 by r plus 1 by infinity okay now this is the 1 by minus 90 minus this is the mu minus 1 and this is the 1 by 30 okay minus minus cancel out so look at this this is the mu minus 1 equal to 30 by 90 therefore mu equal to 4 by 3 okay understood now next now this is the object o and this is the screen i and this is a convex lens a now we have to prove the minimum distance between object and its real image is 4f if d greater than 4f then two real images formed on the screen for two different position of the lens and we have to prove focal length f focal length f of the lens is d square minus x square by 4d and size of the object is the under root of product of the size of the image and ratio of the size of the image is d minus x divided by d plus x whole square now look at this for for real image v is positive and real object u negative so look at this this is the 1 by v minus minus u this is the 1 by f now distance between object and image is equal to capital d therefore v equal to d minus u now putting this value so this is the 1 by d minus u plus 1 by u this is the 1 by f now so from this relation look at this lcm d minus u into u and u plus d minus u equal to 1 by f so look at this here df equal to du minus u square therefore u square minus du plus df this equal to 0 so u equal to d plus minus root under of d square minus 4 df divided by 2 u has u has only one value if this equal to 0 therefore d square minus 4 df this equal to 0 therefore d equal to 4f therefore minimum distance between object and image is 4 times the focal length of the convex lens now next proof two real image is formed on the screen if d greater than f now look at this if d greater than 4f if d greater than now two real images are formed when d greater than 4f look at this when d greater than 4f we get two real value of u suppose this is the u1 equal to d plus root under of d square minus 4df divided by 2 and u2 equal to d minus root under of d square minus 4df divided by 2 as u has two real value so v so v also has two real value therefore two real image is produced on the screen for the two different position of the lens if x be the displacement of the lens then look at then x equals to u1 minus u2 now look at this this minus this so this is the root under of d square minus 4 df therefore x square equal to d square minus 4 df therefore f equal to d square minus x square by 4d okay now next proof look at this if v1 and v2 be the corresponding image distance of u1 and u2 then v1 plus u1 this equals to d so v1 equal to d minus u1 so d minus d plus d plus root over d square minus 4 df divided by 2 so look at this this is the d minus root over of d square minus 4 df divided by 2 so this is the u2 okay therefore v1 equal to u2 similarly v2 equal to u1 now size of the image by size of the object equal to u1 
equal to v1 by u1 and size of the image by size of the object is equal to v2 by u2 okay now multiplying i1 into i2 divided by o square this equals to look at this v1 by u1 into v2 by u2 now v1 means u2 by u1 into u1 by u2 so this 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 is the one therefore i1 i2 equal to o square understood now if we divide this by this then we can get look at this i1 by i2 so look at this this is the u2 by u1 divided by u1 by u2 so look at this u2 by u1 whole square now we know now we know d equals to v1 plus u1 so this is the u2 plus u1 and u1 minus u2 this equal to x so from these two relation this relation and this relation we can get u1 equal to d plus x divided by 2 and u2 equal to d minus x divided by 2 if we put this value, we put this value u2 and u1, we can get look at this d minus x divided by d plus x whole square. Okay, understood? Next, the image of an electric bulb is formed on the opposite wall at a distance of 3 meter away from it. We have to calculate the maximum focal length of the convex lens. Now, the image of a now the image of a bulb is formed at the opposite wall that is image is formed on the screen we have to calculate the maximum focal length of the convex lens we know the minimum distance between object and real image is four times the focal length and this equal to three meter so f equal to three by four therefore focal length f equal to 0.75 meter okay understood next now look at this the distance of screen from an object is 90 centimeter now two images are formed on the screen due to two different position of the lens if the separation of the the if the separation of two position is 20 centimeter we have to calculate the focal length now focal now focal length now focal length f equals to this is the d square minus x square by 4d okay now look at this this is the 90 square minus this is the 20 square by 4 into this is the 90 so look at this this is the a plus b into a minus b 110 into 70 divided by 4 into 90 now this and this cancel out so this is 770 divided by 36 so this is the 21.4 centimeter okay understood now next next the deviation of ray in a prism suppose a ray pq incident on the surface a b of a prism the angle of incidence is i and angle of refraction is r1 at the second surface the angle of incidence is r2 and angle of emergence is e if incident ray PQ and emergent ray RS are produced, they meet at the point T. So look at this, the angle UTR measures the deviation of ray in a prism. The deviation delta equal to angle UTR is the exterior angle of triangle TQR is equal to sum of opposite angles that is this angle plus this angle now the total angle is i this angle is r1 so this is the i minus r1 total angle is e this is the r2 so this is the e minus r2 so this is the i minus r1 plus e minus r2 so this is the i plus e minus r1 plus r2 okay now 
from triangle AQR. Look at this. The whole angle is 90 degree. This is R1. So this angle is 90 minus R1. Okay. In the same way, this angle is 90 minus R2. So from this triangle A plus 90 minus R1 plus 90 minus R2 is equal to 180. Okay. So look at this A equal to R1 plus R2. So division delta equal to I plus E minus A. Okay. A graph between angle of incidence I and a delta. When angle of incidence I increases, the deviation delta decreases and gets a minimum value and then increases. When angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence, the deviation of ray becomes minimum. This condition is called condition of minimum deviation. As I equal to E, so R1 is equal to also R2. Therefore, for minimum deviation, delta M is equal to I plus I minus A. So look at this, 2I is equal to delta M plus A. Therefore, I equal to delta M plus A divided by 2. Okay. In the same way, A equal to R1 plus R1. Therefore, R1 equal to A by 2. Now, we have to express the relation between Ri of the prism and minimum angle of deviation. Considering refraction at the point Q, mu equal to sin i divided by sin r1. Okay. Now putting the value of r1 and i, you get, look at this, this is the sin of delta m plus a divided by 2 whole divided by sin a by 2. Okay. Understood? Next. Now deviation in thin prism. For thin prism, the refracting angle of the prism less than 10 degree. As R1 plus R2 less than 10 degree, therefore R1 and R2 are small. Therefore I1 and I2 also small. Therefore deviation is also small. Therefore mu equal to sine of delta m plus a by 2 whole divided by sin a by 2 can be written as delta m plus a divided by 2 whole divided by 2. 2 to cancel out. So look at this delta m plus a equal to mu into a. Okay. Delta m equal to a into mu minus 1. Okay. Now no emergence of ray from the second surface of a prism. Look at this, this is a prism. A ray PQ incident on this surface. After refraction, it passes through this. If the angle of incidence at the second surface is just greater than or equal to critical angle, then the ray suffers a total internal reflection. So no emergent ray obtained from the second surface of the prism. So look at this, the limiting value of A for no emergent ray is obtained. Look at this, here A equal to R1 plus R2, here R2 equal to critical angle C. When the ray falls normally, the angle of incidence on the first surface is zero. So R1 also be zero. Therefore, limiting angle of A for no emergence of ray from the second surface for normal incidence is A equal to C. And for grazing incidence, look at this. When the ray grazes from the surface, the, this angle also be C. So limiting value of A for grazing incidence 
such that no emergent ray is obtained is A equal to C plus C equal to 2C. Understood? Now, limiting angle of incidence such that no emergent beam is obtained. So, relation among this, this and this are, look at this, here R2 is replaced by C. Okay? No problem. Now, R1 equal to, this is the A minus C. Okay? Now, considering refraction at this point. Look at this, 1 into sin i, this equal to mu into sin r1. What is the value of r1? r1 equal to a minus c. So, look at this, this is the sin i and this is the mu sin, this is the a minus c. Okay? Now, look at this, this is the sin i and mu, this is the sin a cos c minus cos a sin c okay cos a sin c look at this this is the mu sin a now cos c equal to root over 1 minus sin square c minus cos a into sin c okay now we know sin c is equal to 1 by mu if we put this value, we get mu equal to, this is the sin A, this is the sin A into 1 minus 1 by mu square minus cos A into 1 by mu. Okay? So, look at this. This is the sin A into root under of mu square minus 1 minus cos A. Okay? This is the limiting value of angle of in so limiting value of I is obtained from this relation. Okay, now a numerical. Now NCRT numerical 9.6. The minimum deviation of a ray in a prism is 40 degree, and refracting angle is 60 degree we have to calculate the Ri of the material of the prism. Now, what is the relation between mu? What is the relation among? What is the relation among delta m, a and mu? The relation is, look at this, mu equal to, this is the sine of delta m plus a divided by 2, whole divided by, this is the sine a by 2, okay? Look at this. So, this is the sign of this plus this 100, 100 by 2. So, this is the sign 50 degree. And look at this a by 2. So, this is the sign 30 degree. Therefore, look at this. This is the sign 50 degree divided by half. So, 2 sign 50 degree is the value of Ri of the material of the prism. Okay. This equal to almost 1.53. Okay? Understood? Now next. If the prism is placed in water, what will be the minimum deviation? Here, the Ri of the prism with respect to water, this equal to 1.53 divided by Ri of water. So, this is the 1.33. Okay? Now, this becomes, this is the sine of delta m plus 60 degree divided by 2 whole divided by, this is the sine 60 degree by 2. So, look at this, this is the sine of delta m plus 60 degree by 2, this equal to 1.53 divided by 1.33 into sine, this is the 30 degree. So, here sin of delta m plus 60 degree divided by 2 and this becomes 1.53 divided by 2.66. This is equal to 0 0.58 almost equal to sin of 35 degree. So, look at this delta m plus 60 degree divided by 2 this equal to 35 degree. So, delta m equal to 70 degree minus 60 degree. So, this is the 10 degree. Okay. 
understood next the refracting angle of a prism is 60 degree ri is 1.524 we have to calculate the angle of incidence such that the ray suffers total internal reflection at the second surface that is it is the condition of no emergence of ray from the second surface of the prism we have to calculate the angle of incidence we know the sine of ang we know the sine of angle of incidence i this is the root under mu square minus 1 into sin a minus cos a okay so look at this this is the root under of 1.524 whole square minus 1 sin a this is the sin of 60 degree minus cos 60 degree okay now this is equal to 1.15 into root 3 by 2 minus half okay this is the 0 0.996 minus 0 0.5 so look at this this is the 4 9 6 almost 0.5 almost 0.5 that is means this is the sign of 30 degree therefore and the limit therefore angle of incidence i this equal to 30 degree okay now dispersion of light when a white light incident on a prism the white light splits into its seven constituent color this phenomenon is known as a dispersion but this is the white light <coughs> it disperses into seven constituent color the top color is red and bottom color is violet and the yellow color is middle of it so that is why yellow color is called mean color and other color lie between this red and violet color now on the screen a color bend is obtained now on the screen a color bend is obtained this color bend is called spectrum if all the color if the colors in the color bend occupy their own position it is called pure spectrum pure spectrum is obtained only in the laboratory now look at this this is the actual direction of ray okay this is the actual direction of ray and now the deviation of red color look at this this is the delta r and deviation of violet color look at this this is the delta v the difference of deviation of violet and red color is called angular dispersion so angular dispersion delta v minus delta r delta v means this is the mu v minus 1 into a minus mu r minus 1 into a so angular dispersion mu v minus mu r into a okay now dispersive power the ratio between angular dispersion and deviation of yellow color is known as dispersive power so dispersive power delta v minus delta r divided by delta so look at this delta v minus delta delta v minus delta r this is the mu v minus mu r into a divided by mu minus 1 into a this is the expression for dispersive power now cause of dispersion we know the ri of a medium depends on we know the ri of a medium depends on lambda greater the value of lambda smaller the mu so red has greater wavelength than the violet so ri of the prism with respect to red color is less than the ri of the prism with respect to violet color so violet color deviates more and red color deviates less this deviate this difference of deviation is known as angular dispersion okay <laughs> look at this this is the white light now this is the red color and this is the violet color 
now it disperses in the second prism it also disperses in opposite direction so look at this this is the violet and this is the red the mean color the the mean color <coughs> the mean color propagates parallel to the initial direction of the ray so there is no deviation only dispersion occur this is known as dispersion without deviation now condition of dispersion without deviation look at this if the ri mu this is the mu dash this is the a and this is the a dash then the deviation of this now the deviation of ray in this prism is mu minus 1 into a and in this prism this is the mu dash minus 1 into a dash the total deviation is zero okay this is the nct numerical 9.23 that is this is the condition of dispersion without deviation now another condition the deviation without dispersion look now this prism disperse white light into its seven constituent color and this prism again the seven constituent color combined to form a you know, combined to form white light look at this if this is the a this is the a dash this is the mu dash this is the mu then look at this here angular dispersion here angular dispersion mu v minus mu r into a plus the angular dispersion here mu dash v minus mu dash r this into a dash this equal to zero this is the condition for this is the condition for deviation without a dispersion okay next now look at this simple microscope now this is a convex lens of focal length small f a b is placed in front of the lens within the focus of the lens now a ray parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus now another ray passes through the optical center these two ray never meet along this direction if the rays are produced they meet at this point so this is the image of it now as the rays as the image are obtained by producing the rays so this is the virtual image so this is the a dash b dash now the lens is so adjusted that final image is formed at the least distance of a distinct vision this is the d okay and angle made by the image at this position this is the beta now look at this a line is drawn here suppose this is the a1 so object makes an angle alpha at the least distance of distinct vision so look at this so here angular magnification m equal to beta by alpha now beta is equal to this is the a dash b dash divided by d and here a1 b dash divided by d now look at this a1 b dash equal to a b so here a dash b dash divided by a b now look at this from triangle look at this from triangle o a b and triangle o a dash b dash are similar triangle so look at this a dash b dash by a b so this equal to o b dash by o b so this equal to o b dash divided by o b now o b dash is equal to d and o b equal to object distance u now we know 1 by minus d minus minus u equal to 1 by f so look at this this is the 1 by u equal to 1 by d plus 1 by f okay for infinite focusing that is final image is formed at infinity then u should be the focal length of the convex lens so for so for infinite focusing the for 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 infinite focusing the angular magnification is d by f and for distinct focusing 
look at this m equal to d by u that is d into 1 by d plus 1 by f so look at this 1 plus d by f okay this is the this is the this is the expression for angular magnification for distinguishing and this is the normal focusing to get higher magnification we should use a convex lens of smaller focal length okay now compound microscope Con compound microscope consists of two lenses one which close to the object is called objective and other where final image is formed is called eyepiece the focal length of eyepiece greater than the focal length of objective the objective and eyepiece are placed coaxially at the two ends of a cylindrical tube the eyepiece is movable with the help of screw arrangement okay now an object ab is placed between focus and twice the focus of this lens that is between fo and 2fo so objective forms its real magnified image now look at this this is the parallel ray this passes through the focus and another ray passes through the optical center look at this the objective forms its image a dash b dash now to locate the position of eyepiece we have to draw the final image a double dash b double dash now a line is drawn between a double dash and a dash this line intersect a point on the principal axis this is the position of eyepiece okay uh, this ray appear to come from this part now this is the observer okay now eyepiece is so adjusted such that final image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision that is this is the d okay now this is the object distance uo for objective this is the image distance for objective and here this is the object distance for eyepiece okay no problem so distance between the two lenses is vo plus modulus of ue okay understood now another now a quick recap look look at this this is an objective lens an object ab is placed in front of objective the position of object between f0 and 2f0 so objective forms its real magnified and inverted image now this image act as the object for this lens this lens forms it now a dash b dash lie within the focus of this lens so this lens forms its virtual image now now objective is so adjusted that final image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision now look at this this is the this is the angle beta made by the final image at the least distance of distinct vision now this is the ab this also makes an angle alpha at the least distance of distinct vision okay this is the this is the alpha and this distance is the d okay no problem so angular magnification m is equal to beta by alpha look at this beta equal to a double dash b double dash by d look at this this is the a double dash b double dash divided by d and alpha equal to a b by d this is the a b by d so look at this this is the a double dash b double dash by a b now this can be written as a dash b dash by a b into a double dash b double dash divided by a dash b dash okay now look at this a dash b dash by a b look at this triangle o a b and triangle o a dash b dash are similar triangle 
so this by this equal to vo by uo so look at this this is the vo by uo and this is the 1 plus d by ap look at this this magnification is produced by objective and this magnification is produced by eyepiece okay now a numerical this is a rough sketch of compound microscope this is the object this is the image of formed by objective and this is the final image formed by eyepiece look at this in the first case capital d equal to 25 centimeter okay now vo plus mod ue this equal to 15 centimeter we have to calculate the uo look at this for eyepiece ve is equal to d equal to minus 25 centimeter fe look at this f equal to 6.25 centimeter so this is the 6.25 centimeter now we have to calculate ue look at this 1 by v minus 1 by ue equal to 1 by ap so look at this this is the minus 1 by 25 minus 1 by ue this is the 1 by 6.25 so look at this 1 by ue minus this equal to 1 by 25 plus 1 by 6.25 the LCM is 25 and this is the 1 plus 4 so this is the 1 by 5 therefore object distance u e equal to minus 5 understood now we have to calculate the image distance for objective look at this here v o plus mod u e minus 5 equal to 15 so look at this v o equal to 10 now vo10 fo equal to 2 now we have to calculate uo so look at this 1 by vo minus 1 by uo equal to 1 by fo okay this is the 1 by 10 minus 1 by uo equal to 1 by 2 so look at this minus 1 by uo is equal to 1 by 2 minus 1 by 10 so look at this 10 lcm this is the 5 minus 1 so this is the 4 by 10 so this is the 1.25 so uo equal to minus 2.5 so object distance for objective is 2.5 centimeter okay now magnification in the, now the magnification in first case this is the vo by uo into 1 plus d by ap okay now vo equal to 10 uo equal to 2.5 and 1 plus d 25 and ap equal to 6.25 now look at this this equal to 4 and this equal to 5 so look at this 4 into 5 that is 20 is the magnification in the first case in second case if the object is in the second case if image is formed at infinity then ads bds at the focus of the eyepiece so look at this ue becomes minus 6.25 centimeter so you can calculate vo now vo plus mod of minus 6.25 this equals to 15 therefore vo equal to 8.75 okay understood now we have to calculate uo look at this 1 by vo minus 1 by uo equal to 1 by fo so look at this minus 1 by uo this is the 1 by fo minus 1 by vo look at this this is the 1 by 2 and this is the 8.75 now lcm is 2 into 8.75 so this is the 8.75 minus 2 so this is the 6.75 okay minus 2 into 8.75 divided by 6.75 this almost equal to minus 2.6 okay now we have to calculate magnification now here magnification m equal to v naught by u naught into d by fe now look at this this is the 8.75 
and this is the 2 into 8.75 divided by 6.75 into this is the 25 divided by 6.25 okay now this and this cancel this and this cancel okay so look at this 6.75 into 4 divided by 2 so this and this cancel out so this is the 13.5 is the magnification okay now astronomical telescope astronomical telescope consists of two convex lens this and this the lens close to the object is called objective and the lens by which final image is formed is called eyepiece the focal length and aperture of objective lens is made large to get greater magnification and greater by and greater brightness of the image these two lens are placed coaxially at the two ends of a cylindrical tube the eyepiece is mobile with the help of rake and pinion arrangement Suppose rays from infinity incident on the objective. So look at this. This is the angle of in, look at this. This angle is alpha. So after refraction, they forms image at the focal plane of the objective. So this is the image AB. As this angle alpha, so this angle also alpha. This is also alpha. As the image AB is formed at the focal plane of the objective, so this distance is the FO. Okay. Now look at this. This is the position of eyepiece. Now this is the eyepiece. If the focus of eyepiece is also at the point B, so the final image is formed at infinity. This type of image formation is called infinite focusing okay so for infinite focusing look at this this is the ap for infinite focusing the length of the telescope this is the fo plus ap okay now angular magnification if this angle beta so look at this angular magnification this is the beta by alpha this equal to look at this this equal to AB divided by AP whole divided by AB by FO. So look at this FO by AP be the magnification of astronomical telescope. Now if the eyepiece is moved towards AB the image becomes virtual. Now it is adjusted in such a way that the final image is formed at the least distance of distinct basin capital D. So in this case, this is not the AP. This is slightly less than AP. So suppose this is the UE object distance. This is the object distance. Okay. Now angular magnet. Now look at this. The distance between the two lenses becomes FO, FO plus UE. What is UE? Look at this 1 by minus D minus 1 by UE equal to 1 by AP. So look at this 1 by UE equal to 1 by AP plus 1 by D. Now UE equal to look at this. This is the AP into D plus now UE equal to AP into D divided by AP plus D. AP into D divided by AP plus D. Okay, here angular magnetism beta by alpha. So this is the AB by UE whole divided by AB by FO. So this becomes FO by UE. Now what is 1 by UE? 1 by UE equal to 1 by AP into uh, 1 by AP plus 1 by D. Therefore, this is the AP by F. This is the FO by AP plus FO by D is the magnification for a distinct focusing. Okay, now a numerical. NCRT 9.34. Look at this a telescope of objective focal length 140 centimeter. 
IP is focal length 5 cm. We have to calculate the magnifying power when final image is formed at infinity and final image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision. We know the angular magnification. We know the angular magnification for infinite focusing. This is the FO by FE. So look at this. This is the 140 divided by 5. So this is the 28. Now angular magnification for distinct focusing. This equal to FO by FE plus this is the FO by capital D. So look at this. This is the 28. So this is the 28 and this is the 1 by 40 by 25. So look at this. This is the 28 and this is the 5.6. So 33.6 is the angular magnification. Okay. Now a reflecting telescope. The astronomical telescope has chromatic aberration and spherical aberration and aperture of the lens is not so large therefore the brightness of the image will be decreased the reflecting telescope solve the above defects now cassegrain telescope in cassegrain telescope a concave mirror a small convex mirror and a eyepiece lens is used now look at this a parallel rays incident on the reflecting mirror so they meet at the focus now before meeting this ray again reflected by the convex mirror and it forms image at the first focus of the eyepiece so eyepiece forms its image at infinity okay the brightness of the image and resolving power of the ima image in this telescope is very very high okay now a numerical relating to cassegrain telescope the radius of curvature of two mirror in the cassegrain telescope is 220 millimeter and 140 millimeter separation is 8 millimeter find the position of final image for an object at infinity so look at this the focal length of concave mirror this is the 11 centimeter and focal length of convex mirror this is the 7 centimeter okay now the when u equal to infinity v equal to 11 centimeter okay look at this this is the this is the concave mirror so parallel rays meet here this is the 11 and this look at this so image distance is 11 centimeter from the mirror now this distance is 2 millimeter so virtual object for convex mirror u equal to this is the 11 minus 2 so this is the 9 focal length 7 so look at this this is the 1 by v plus 1 by u this is the 1 by f now this is the 1 by v plus this is the 1 by 9 equal to 1 by this is the 7 so 1 by v equal to 1 by 7 minus 1 by 9 lcm 63 this is the 2 so v equal to 31.5 the final image is formed at a distance 31.5 centimeter from the convex mirror okay many many thanks for watching this video this video will be extremely helpful in your board main need and advanced examination please like share and comment on this video if you are new please subscribe my channel to get the new videos